Hey everybody, welcome back to Dark Souls. All right, let's continue our adventure. We are down here at the bottom of the gutter. I believe this is called the Black Gulch. We are about to fight the Rotten, but there's a lot of other stuff we can do first. We can go ahead and uh, pave the way to getting uh, Havel's gear here. All right, for that we'll need a key. All right, so let's find out how to get that too. All right, now coming from this first bonfire, I'm going to make a point to kill these statues. If you hate these statues as much as, much as I do, then you will appreciate every single one that I knock over on its ass. Because, uh, yeah, these statues deserve to be hated. They've, uh, they've earned every bit of that. Okay, now in this first area, there will be a, uh, a ledge. And I'm not talking about the ledge that leads, leads down to that Dark Giver guy and the two giants where we will be going to get our key that leads to uh, the room that has Havel's gear in it and also leads to another uh, quote-unquote secret room down in the big well in Majula, all right? But uh, this ledge leads to, um, oh, what's her name? Mara of Lusatel, Lusatel of Mara. Uh, uh, you know what, honestly, I'll never remember that ever, but uh, this ledge leads to her and this gets her in the fight. If you want the trophy for um, summoning her and keeping her alive every time, then fall off on this first ledge here, all right? Just after the first bonfire. And here she is. Now, this is the third time I've talked to her. First time being uh, near the Flexile Sentry at No Man's Wharf, then the second time um, being in that one little tower room at the front half of the Lost Bastille, all right? And then we talk to her here, and she gives me a plus one steel ring of protection, which is actually really good for physical defense. It actually comes in really real handy and uh, probably been wise for me to use it on this boss but uh, I didn't be that as it may um, get up here on this ledge um, not only do you get to talk to her and she gives you that great ring but you can get up here and bash these sniping statues in the back side of their heads all right and then you can kind of fall down behind these guys and get a few licks in on them before they get a chance to spit all over you too uh, and of course or you can just get spit on anyway yeah whatever I have plenty of life gems, though. Life gems uh, neutralize poison. Well, I say that as they heal you as fast as the poison is killing you, so kind of evens out. All right. Now, uh, anyone who's been here before knows that these black pools here, these oily pools, hold these uh, these grabber guys, and if they do get a hold of you, they'll push a spike to your face, and if your health's low enough, they're just going to one-shot you. All right. If not, they're going to do some uh, good, decent amount of damage. Yeah, they're really good at their job. Okay, so um, key to these guys, if you want to farm these guys, is you can tell which pools they're in because you'll see their little tentacles just kind of pulsating out the side of the pool if you look closely. Okay, and you get close, and then when you see the splash of oil, just back roll. That's all you have to do. And you can get out of their reach, all right, and then come right back in. And they have no poise, so you can stun lock them uh, really easily. Get in a few hits and finish them off. And then we have these big wormy guys. They drop, uh, I believe, poison stones. They also drop a spell. I forget what's that spell called. Uh, scraps of life. Anyway. All right, now these guys, If uh, why, I ask, why I say farm them is because they, uh, they tend to drop large titanite uh, shards and titanite chunks. Yes, these guys will drop chunks, and this is a good place to get those early, should you need them. In fact, I may come back here and farm a little bit. It's either this or go join the uh, the Bellbro Covenant and farm for chunks there. Just about every time you win, you get a Titanite chunk. Seems like a kind of an OP reward for that, considering the uh, if you're on the side of the Bell Tower guys, um, it's uh, you usually have help. It's usually 2v1. And it's usually level to the guys coming through. I don't ever remember being just way out leveled or way outclassed by anybody in that. So I think it's uh, definitely favors you. I think the rewards are a little um, uh, too high for the amount of work you have to put in, in my opinion. I think things should be just a little harder to come by. It feels strange to say that, but uh, you know, a la the Souls games, you would think that uh, you would actually have to earn some stuff, but. Uh, no, you can get to the Bellbro Covenant and walk away with, you know, 50 Titanite chunks in about an hour, and, you know, it's... Yeah, anyway. 
But here you can farm these guys. Now each set, you have uh, several of these oily pools up here by this first bonfire. Then you have some farther down and each uh, each set of these pools will respawn, oh, at least, uh, I don't know, 10, 12, 13 times each playthrough, okay? So out of all, all that, I think there's a grand total of seven of these guys between all the pools. Maybe even more, maybe eight or nine, but uh, it's, I know it's at least seven of them. And so between all of them, you figure if you can farm these guys 10, 12 times or so, you're talking about 70, 80, 90 of these uh, chances to get a Titanite, large Titanite shard or a Titanite chunk. It's definitely worth farming out. If you, of course, if you have a rusted coin or the gold serpent ring, that of course raises your chances even further. It's really convenient that they're right here next to the bonfires too. So let's go hit the bonfire, come right back, and as long as you don't die, the statues won't respawn. So once you've killed all these statues, you can just come out and have a, a field day with these with these guys right here. Be done with it. Once again, if it seems like I am going out of my way to kill these statues, I am. And I'm loving every moment of it. It's all worth it to me. Anybody who can relate, you can appreciate this. All right. So having finished all those off, we'll go back here to this... I guess, hidden or secret bonfire. As long as we're human, now... Lucitel's uh, sign is going to be there. Okay, I can come back for that. But uh, first, I want to go down to uh, the Dark Giver guys area. Okay, this is a PvE covenant. In that the challenges that you need to meet to uh, fulfill all the requirements of this covenant and eventually meet the uh, this one final Dark Angel guy. It's actually pretty cool. Um, you have to talk to this guy three times. This doesn't have to be the first time, but this is the first time I'm, I'm coming across this guy. Okay, he meets you here, then he meets you in the ruins on the other side of the Shaded Woods. Through uh, some wooden planks on the ground, you'll fall through a hole. Alright, talk to him there. There'll also be a chest when you meet him there, near him. Don't forget that. It's got, a, if you're going for the trophy for the spells, there's a particular spell in that chest. And then, uh... The last time he meets you is at, uh, what is it called, the Duke's Castle, or whatever. Basically at the end of the game, once you've uh, gotten all the other boss souls and gone through that one main door, and then gone through the rain and gotten the big statues to open the door for you, that that castle. Right there, it essentially, not it's not the end of the game, but it's one of the last places you'll go in the game. Anyway, so come in here, and these giants are, they're almost impossible to see. Um, one thing that you can tell if you have your, your light settings on your game right, as you can see their clubs, and I just kind of aim between them until I finally get a hit marker, and then I start pumping them full of uh, poison arrows. And essentially, you, po you only have to poison them twice. That should do it. Roughly. You say when the poison wears off, he'll be about half health, give or take a little. Can't remember normally walking out that far. But uh, this is, at least up to this point, always been a safe spot. I would hate to see him swing through the wall and knock me off that ledge. That would suck, especially if I've already spent most of my poison arrows. That would uh, really suck, actually. You can see the dust that they kick up with their feet. Although it's not a real good guide to see where they're at, you can at least more or less tell the general vicinity. They have a nice reach. They have a really, really long range. I mean a really long range. I wonder if that club is available in the game. I don't recall having ever seen that club as a weapon. But uh, if this is true to most Souls games, I would think that just about any weapon you see, you can eventually have. At least some version of it. It'll be a little smaller for you. Most cases. Not always. Sometimes it's just huge regardless. All of the uh, Black Knight Greatsword. That behemoth. <laughs> but that's a big club. That club is literally three times. I don't. I couldn't see me carrying that. If I ever do find that club and get to carry it around, that would look absolutely ridiculous. If you could run around dual wielding those. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. 
That would really be awesome. You probably have to be level 700. But, uh... I saw someone invade me with two of these clubs. PvP. I, 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 he'd, he'd probably kill me if nothing else just for me laughing. I'd be, I'd be like, wow, that's just, just too damn cool. Okay, now these guys, um, you get a you get a bunch of stuff from doing this right here. You really do. I mean, they really made made this a way to get a crap ton of loot. I think this maybe was supposed to be harder than it is, or something. But uh, all right, so the giants are going to drop souls when you kill them, right? And then you get something that's actually called a soul of a giant, all right? And getting a certain number of those um, apparently has different effects in the game. Okay, and then you get back here, and you have access to this chest. You get a great ring. Plus the key. Alright, ring of the giants plus one. That gives you extra poise. So if you want poise, even though you're wearing light armor, if you want to re reach a certain poise threshold with less armor, then uh, you might choose to wear that ring. Alright, and then this key not only gives you access to Havel's armor, but there's a uh, door down in the well, and we'll, we'll go check that out later, all right? Just in case anybody watching this doesn't know where it's at, you know? Um, and it's got a crap ton of stuff in it. I mean, just uh, two, it's like three chests full of junk. Mage goods, mage materials, you know, like a, I think a staff and uh, just some other stuff. I think you've got one thing that can cast like both hexes and miracles or some crap like that. I don't know, it's OP stuff, and there's a lot of it in there. And then, um, and we have some spells. I think Great Lightning Spear is another one. And then, uh, of course, you have all of Havel's gear back there in the gutter. And we'll go back and get all that. Okay, but what I want to do here is go ahead and talk to this guy real quick. So I can, uh, quote-unquote, meet him for the first time. Okay, this is one of three doors that this key fits in. Make sure there's no chest in here. I don't think so, right? Talk to this guy. I have a habit of going through uh, all the dialogue with everybody when I think of it. Simply because you never know when someone's going to give you something. Or, or teach you a gesture. A lot of times, you know, after you've talked to them so much, they'll eventually give you a... Uh, you know, a dialogue box where you can uh, use them as a merchant. You won't even have even known they were a merchant. Or they'll teach you a gesture, you know, or uh, whatever. Give you an item. Meet you again some other time. Type of deal. Okay, well, being human now and uh, having gotten my key and all that good stuff and having talked to Lucitel and gotten everything out of the way, if I was going for the trophy, which I have it, but say if I was going for it, um, it would be necessary to keep her alive during this fight. And uh, if you keep any kind of distance between you and the Rotten, he will focus on her. He does not like her at all. He is attracted to her and he will uh, push her into the fire and destroy her. And spam his most powerful attacks on her. Yes, he, uh, he will do work. The Smelter Demon is kind of like that, too. Okay, and... Uh, I won't include all of my fails. <laughs> I realize that uh, I have just forgotten all the timing on everything. It kind of... Kind of frightens me a little bit thinking about future bosses is that uh, I think perhaps all of us go a crazy I just uh, I just lost the, the feel for it it's one of those things where you, you you'd like to tell everyone you know really I, I don't play this bad but uh, you know you can see everybody rolling their eyes going yeah sure whatever dude <laughs> no really honestly I don't suck this bad but uh, yeah I've I played this boss horribly Try to share with you guys some of my failings. Thank you. 
It's one of the cooler looking bosses. I mean, he's just... Man. Using corpses to walk around on this. It's pretty hideous. Alright, I mean, you know, seriously. It doesn't matter if I sit there and say, man, I was dodging. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I couldn't time that right off either. I would like to think that I'm not the only one that's just... Uh, <clears throat> been destroyed like that. I used to be able to roll like that all the time. I used to be able to just freak with this guy, but, uh, you know, not lying. I think you'll you'll somewhat see it here that, uh, you know, I'm able. It's just, uh, I don't know. But it's cool. I, I actually kind of like this boss fight. I mean, this wasn't as frustrating as I guess it could have been just because, uh, you know, I, he's kind of cool. <laughs> it's, it's a cool boss fight. It really is. Then notice I, I, I don't... Uh, except, well, this guy has a little bit of magic, some low-level magic that he came in with. But uh, he's not doing anything impressive. He's not taking a quarter of this guy's health with each spell type thing, so... I think I'm actually doing more damage with my swords, to tell you the truth. And then he's going to uh, give me some loving and hugging and squeezing. I love you, man. I love you, man. All right, let me get out of here. That's one of those times where if you are soloing this guy, you have to hope you can get away and, and down a flask before it's too late. Because this guy will chase you. No, 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 no. Now, see, I dodged that time. Did, I did, I did, I did. There's a way you can you can time that roll, you know, you can back roll out of that explosion if, if you time it right. And I believe I did, but, uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> That's so bad. Okay, that one, I even laughed. I was like, yeah, uh, he's down to, uh, if, if a rat farts in the fire next to him, he's dead. Okay, so several tries later, I, I'm serious, I, it was just epic fail after epic fail. It, it, whatever could go wrong did go wrong. And so any of you guys can relate, leave a comment below and reassure me that, that I'm not alone here. Don't leave me out in the cold in the dark by myself, thinking I suck just all by myself. <laughs> what do you guys admit to sucking too so I don't feel so bad? No, it's, it's all good. Some of these weren't just horrible, terrible, casual losses. They were like, you know, well, crap happens. I do kind of freak with them a little bit here though. I know this is a boss. It's really dangerous to get greedy with this boss, especially if you have a relatively low stamina pool. Um, ex expending your last swing, right, and having no ability to roll or dodge, uh, yeah, that's that that can end it right there. Because especially if he can if he can stun lock you, or if he can get you knocked down with one hit, he's gonna follow up with it, and you're and you're, you're toast. But I do believe I kept Lucitel alive here, all right? And so, uh, it's all good. Now, if this if this other guy, the Schmidt guy, can stay ranged, basically the key to having him, if you if you have just him as a follower, I believe, is to draw the aggro yourself and let him stay from it at a distance. And if he does get hurt, he'll actually use flasks. It's one thing I wish Lucitel would do is use flasks, but uh, she doesn't. Well, I've never seen her do it anyway. Uh, see, I rolled that time, too. I really did. Honestly, I did. I wouldn't say I did if I didn't, but I, I, I did. I was pushing the button. I was mashing on the button, as a matter of fact. But, uh... Damn controller was broke. <laughs> see, I, I, I know the roll. I mean, I know it. I do. I do. There. That's proof. Proof that I know the roll. Ninja, you just got lucky that time. No, honestly, I, oh, shut up. Never mind. <laughs> I win. I win. All right, so Lucitelle's still alive. All right, so I still have her. All right, like I say, it's, it's not a uh, trophy I'm going to earn for this, but maybe uh, if I do keep her alive and we keep this video series going, then when I do finally meet her in front of that, uh, what is that area with the big bone dragon in the entrance? In the mirrors with the guys that... Anyway, um, when I meet her there, um, she will uh, give me something. 
I think it's like her brother. It's supposed to be her brother's sword or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe she gives a shield. Oh, she gives something. Anyway, now I came across this surprise, okay? Now, I did not play this um, since the DLC came out, but apparently this is the entrance to the DLC, so, of course, I'm going to go investigate. And I, I, I haven't downloaded the DLC, at least I haven't knowingly downloaded it, unless it came with the update. I know there was a pretty uh, pretty impressive-sized update when I uh, reinstalled the game this time to play through for you guys. Um... I don't know. I mean, obviously, this was in the update. This this right here. But uh, we'll get in here. We have this this kind of cool area. I don't, I don't know what it's about. I'm sure there's a backstory to it, which comes with the DLC. This is uh, something having to do with the Sunken King. All right, so anyone who's played that DLC will will know exactly what all this is about. Me, I was totally clueless. I didn't. I I had no idea. I was just playing like I always had. And uh, this says closed, so I, I, I guess if I had the DLC, it would be open. I know when they added the, uh, what was it, Arturius of the Abyss DLC with Dark Souls 1, um, you basically had this uh, little thing in the back of a cave down there by the Hydra. Okay, and it was there, even if you didn't have the DLC, it, it was there. You just, you just couldn't activate it, and it required a, oh, it was like a pendant or a ring or something that you got from a golem in the Duke's archives. So you had to essentially make it that far just to get the item you needed to unlock the area in the Hydra. And that's, that, that way they could kind of give you a, a, a level limit, I guess. That was their way of doing that. But, uh, or at least, at least you had to make it to a certain point in the game. Like you couldn't even get to that point in the Duke's archives unless you had gotten the uh, Lord Vessel, for example. Type of thing, you know, to unlock the, the Golden Fog. So that you get through that area, and then you get in there, and then you get it. Well, if you made it that far, then I guess they considered you ready to go to the Arturius of the Abyss area, or whatever. Anyway, so hit the Primal Bonfire. Come here, alright? Now, I believe I have uh, some Estus Flash Shards and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and level up a little bit. And so on and so forth. And then, uh, before we go back to the gutter to get Havel's armor... Let's go ahead and take a look in this room down the well while we're at it. I mean, I was going to use a bonfire to get somewhere anyway. Might as well uh, might as well cover all our bases best we can. Okay, I want to get my adaptability up. I want some more invincibility frames. That's 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 kind of a must. I believe it also extends the uh this either extends the distance you roll or the less equipment weight you have. Extends the distance you roll, and the adapt adaptability um, gives you more invincibility frames when you roll. Okay, apparently, as long as you're under seventy percent, your roll stays the same speed regardless. Although I don't know. I mean, I've been lightweight. Like when my bandit first started, it rolled. It seemed like it. My bandit rolled noticeably faster than my knight did, for example. I don't know if that was just because I was carrying an axe in my hand instead of. A uh, broadsword? I don't think so. But uh, I don't know, maybe in my imagination. Anyway, and since I have all these souls in my pocket, I might as well go upgrade my pyromancy glove, which is about the only magic I could use if I was going to use anything. And I will. I may get a hold of Firestorm, and uh, I'll want Flash Sweat when I get to the Iron Keep if I want to go get any of those chests that are out there on the lava. And that's going to be a really good thing to do the video on, because anyone who's had trouble getting those chests and has finally just died enough to where they've said, screw it, there's a trick to getting those chests, and it's so ridiculously easy to get it if you know the trick. If you don't know the trick, you'll probably never get at least one of those chests. The one that's way out at the end of that big, long one that's covered in fire all the way down. That one, um, there's a way to get that just simple pimple. In fact, uh, anyone who's hanging out here and listening to me now but it's been there and is on that part or something, just just by any coincidence, anybody who's listening and is, and is struggling with that, here's the key. You can go splash around in water. There's uh, uh, jars of water laying around that you can break and splash around. And once you start leaving little wet footprints on the ground, that means you're soaked or saturated, okay? Um, you also have the, uh, what is it, the orange barbs or whatever. Uh, those little... Uh, 
I don't know, those little orange things that you can eat that increase your flame resistance. All right, and you also have flash sweat. Do not, by any means, use flash sweat or eat one of those little orange burrs, okay, after you splash around in the water. What that will do is give you the protection, right, of the last thing you used, and they don't stack. So what that means is the water gives you, say, 90% uh, uh, fire resistance for a short period of time. Flash sweat may only give you, say, 20%, and the orange burr only gives you, like, 10%. Well, if you eat the orange burr, then use uh, flash sweat, all right, then splash around in the water. As long as you splash around in the water last and don't do anything after that, you'll get the full effect of the water stacked on top of whatever else you've used. If you use anything after that, you replace the effect of the water with whatever you've used last, all right, which will basically drop your fire resistance to nothing, and that's the reason you're burning up the second that you touch those lava bricks. That's why. Okay, so that's the key to it. All right, so if that helped anybody ahead of time, then uh, then this uh, honestly, then this whole video was worth it. All right, so anyway, we get down here, and you can see kind of peeking over the ledges, which which ledge has the ladder leading back up. All right, so you go land on that one and climb back up the ladder, and you come into this nifty room here with five billion chests in it, and uh, way too much gear for the amount of effort you actually put into getting it. All right, there is a spell. And there is, I believe, a uh, catalyst and a... I don't know, I think that's like for everything right there, if I'm not mistaken. For you guys interested in that stuff, right? There's a miracle, great lightning spear. All right, now you can just homeward bone from here. All right, now why don't we go ahead and fast travel down to the gutter. And we'll go make a quick dash over to where Havel's armor's at. It's actually uh, uh, too easy to get to. All that's required once you get here. Take a quick look, see. All right. We'll want to go to that ramp down there. You'll have a torch bro and his buddy with a sword waiting for you when you make the leap. All right. So up here by this sconce, just take a nice running start. Pretty easy jump to make, actually. If I can make it, anyone can. And then uh, Torch Bro down here. And then this ladder, right here. Okay, this takes you straight there. That's all there is to it. And so basically, sniping two giants gets you access to uh, a hex, a miracle, a bunch of uh, magic, sorcery, stuff, all right, a full set of Havel's gear and his shield, okay, not to mention the other loot, and a giant soul, so uh, not a bad deal, oh, and a great ring, there's a crap ton of poison statues in here, I don't know if there's a way to get, get into this without actually getting poisoned, doesn't really matter, but if you like killing statues, once again, now, for the sake of the video, I won't uh, do this, but normally I will kill every last one in here just because. Because it's the right thing to do, honestly. <laughs> it's the right thing to do, and I'm sticking, and I'm sticking to it. All right, but we'll, uh, that's Havel's full set there in that jar, along with his great shield. Okay, and once again, we can just uh, homeward bone out of here. Me, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go down here and get this thing that I forgot earlier. Let's go ahead and almost die. Uh, in fact, I probably should have died right there. Don't know why I didn't just jump instead. But come down here and then look off this ledge, and there's some jars there. There's still one other item that I didn't grab earlier, if you remember from the last video. But so. Uh, I'm 99% positive. Well, it's definitely not something I need, so I'm not going to worry about it. For time's sake, I'm going to uh, homeward bone out of here and get back. We'll look at uh, Havel's gear real quick. I believe it requires 20 strength. All right? And uh, it's not showing up in the picture. There it is. All right? And that's it. Havel's gear and killed the rotten, and we will move on from here. Y'all take care. Yeah, have a good one.
Alright, thanks for watching everybody. I put links to more Dark Souls in the top box, and for complete listings of all my videos, click on the bottom box. And to subscribe and join the Ninja Flip, smash on that button up top. You can also follow on Facebook and Twitter to get notified when new videos are up. The links are below in the artwork and in the About section. Y'all take care.